shared my screen, but give me the green water. All right. This finally been moved away from draft. PCAP command stuff. All right. Some reviewers on it. Uh, what do I type here again? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, it's just Dominic. Hi. Um, yeah, I put that on the agenda. Oh, yeah, the agenda. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody have a link to that? Uh, it's in Google Drive. <laughs> Let me find it. I was just updating it. Uh, did you put it by last week? No, just today. Oh. What did you put? The future topics thing. Ah, you kept light. ah there. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. Anything to talk about or just needs reviews? Yeah. Um, like we... We just wanted to get some review from the Bosch team on the CLI parts. We we hope it's the way you uh, anticipated, but we are not sure. So that's why we need like yeah, clarification from all the integration parts. That's also, the, the what the review sorry. process is for. So I think like yeah, right. the reviewers are now assigned. So we will. Uh, uh, cool. These are just the suggestions, though. What's the uh, uh, group names? Uh, life cycle. Life cycle. Yeah. There we go. And then anybody else who wants to hop on can have a look at it too. But uh, it took like a very not didn't try running or anything, but high level like structurally. I mean, it seems like it was <laughs> copy and pasted similar or other yeah. commands and. That's that's the way we always do it. I haven't written new code in years. <laughs> but yeah. Uh yeah, we'll get some reviews and uh All maybe right. get it merged soon. Cool. Yeah, thank you for that contribution. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh anything else to talk about the PCAP command? I'm good. Thanks. All right. Uh, enable the CI test bump cooling package to remove packages. Okay. I think this was a request from uh, somebody on the CAPI team. Maybe CAPI now is runtime, Diego, maybe. Uh, but requesting that we update the um, shared Golang bump package to allow you to remove a package also. Should be a non-breaking change um enhanced functionality of the script so that it will remove a package because the in the go router i know that they lock to a specific miner of golang rather than floating on golang 1.x uh because golang has broken them in the past because of some of the changes so this was suggested as a enhancement uh it won't remove all of their problems because they'll still have to change the package specs uh which is like something that might be a benefit in the future is to make those take globs so that you wouldn't need to update package specs to uh, to make transitions like this, but pretty, pretty minor non-breaking sort of thing. What is the word? It's not foundation. Life. Life, Life cycle. cycle. That's not part of our group. Yes, it's all about life cycle management or so. I don't know. <laughs> My trying to remember foundational infrastructure does not help me remember life cycle at all. All right. Uh, life cycle is the area. Like there's areas push. too? Yes, there's areas within this group. I knew that.
I have to check whether ChatGPT knows this. <laughs> The other new PR shell autocomplete for the Bosch CLI. Uh, this is interesting. I thought they decided not to make this a PR. So he made a PR for like directly in the Bosch CLI and he also made a separate one. Okay. Why would, he, why would he make a separate one if he was making a PR? Uh, be, I Just don't cause? know. All right. Uh, because it, he probably already thought, yeah, the autocomplete is probably not going to be integrated or accepted. <laughs> um, doesn't seem like a bad thing. No, it's nice. Me, it doesn't seem like a bad thing either. So it's, it's yeah. <laughs> it looks, it seems to work. I've seen other people using external tools. I'm like, oh, that's nice, but I'm not motivated enough to go find something to install. But if it was just part of the CLI. Yeah. And this does like deployment names too and stuff? It seems so. So that's what the other one with uh, which I tested seems to do it. Um, see okay. Find the on that. I guess we'll see in the review process. I know one of the reasons I've been not motivated to ever do something is the short commands in Bosch the are like so good. Um like I've not typed more than four characters to do a Bosch command in forever. I wish mm -hmm. Del D was shorter though. But I put in a chat uh in the Zoom chat the the repo that he actually is for standalone auto completion. Basically, what he's doing is creating a Bosch alias for it, and then he run basically run the Bosch commands through the through that uh, autocomplete engine that he has. All right, cool stuff. I'm not familiar with the whole Cobra thing, so not. Uh... It's a very commonly used library for. Um, um, implementing um, common verbs and switches, options, etc. This looks related to the other work, uh, which is mergeable. At this point, is it related or dependent? Like, does it yeah, it definitely feels like if we're adding docs here, the other one should probably wait too on much this short. one. Yeah. No doubt this was part of Aram's plan, but give him a reminder. All right. Brought us some new issues. Six plus seven. Okay, both of these. Oh. Head back? <laughs> Uh, I think you can close it now. Yeah, we did it. Uh, I, when did they open this? The 11th? No, the 6th.
All right. So on, mon on Monday, I replied, or it's Tuesday, I think Monday, I replied to that. It's fixed in the new OpenStack version. Uh, use that one. Yeah. Uh, also, the underlying problem is not fixed, right? Uh, I mean, we decided not to fix the underlying problem. Yeah. I wanted to fix the underlying problem, but it's really hard. Yeah, it's really complicated. Sort of Bosch releases V2, where we got to create an opt-in opt -in thing. Like, my release supports V2, and then we, like, just namespace everything for you. Yeah, that's complicated. Uh, what yeah. version of the director are they using though? Because we've been namespacing that for a while, right? Yeah, but this was specifically to the CPI. Right, but the CPI only conflicts because the director also had a Ruby 3.1 package, but the Ruby director hasn't had a 3.1 package for like a very long time. Uh, yeah, that's already like, like more than a year. <laughs> yeah, so they're on 277. <laughs> yeah, well. All right. I'm just going to close it. Seems like. 7743, I don't know which one it is. Yeah. Seems, seems reasonably new. Uh. Bubble but I up. think it's it's more uh it was more an issue between the feature CPI and the and the OpenStack one or AWS and it was because it was that, that, that CPI also also had Ruby so I think that's where the real conflict came in. vSphere AWS and Azure and OpenStack I think all use Ruby. Um, it, it, we did that thing with namespacing the, the rubies, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the prefixing work that yeah. I think Ramon, you worked on, right? Yeah. Yes. So we did. Yeah. So I did that without seeing this issue last weekend uh, because I saw they had a different issue that they pinged me on that then evolved into like, oh, now we're seeing this error. And I was like, oh, we should have done that in OpenStack. We didn't. Um, I'm unfortunately the one who caused this issue because of those auto bumping scripts we were looking at a minute ago. Like we started doing more of those and those don't work if the package name is changing all the time because then you got to change the spec. So I was like, let's get rid of this patch versions on the end of the packages, which meant that now you were more likely to have conflicts as we, especially once we started auto bumping stuff. So this is the hopefully final piece to fix that mess. Um, all right. And this is a bubble up. Oh. Which I commented on and don't remember. Oh, I think we looked at this last week, didn't we? Yeah, you said that maybe it's an agent. Uh, um, IP reuse issue. Um, but... Was that from two weeks ago or something? Talked about it last week, and then I apparently haven't checked my email in several days. Six days. So I don't remember seeing a response to this. And look through this and follow up and see if there's anything else in here. The Sox 5 dialer is kind of a weird error. Well, that's what it uses when when it wants to go, when it wants to deploy the Bosch directly through the John box. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. Yeah. It will set up the Sox 5 dialer. But, and if he has... Uh, if they have, like, corporate firewalls... That's uh, that basically blocks these kind of things. Then you can get these kind of errors. So basically, you cannot use a jump box because uh, some organizational setting is is blocking it. But this is with Fisher, right? Uh. I think it was oh no AWS that's right which seemed so even more strange AWS is most of the times is like some organizational 
over yes yeah, some kind of thing that say that okay you can just set it but we will not adhere to it whatsoever so so they're, like they're blocking ssh they're block they're blocking something i've i've seen this not many times but that is the message like client, the, it's two different works. error messages right like the first message is in the file yeah and then they're saying the that file. that normally happens after this one Yeah, but that means that that one is flaky, right? So it's non persist. Yeah. It's not a persistent error. So that rules out the, the firewall thing. Where do you see it's flaky? It's failing every time, right? No, that's what he's saying. So the error, the uh, the oh, issue is one. about an other error, error, and this one happens before the other error. But the fact that they reach another error means that this one is not uh, that this one uh, is a flake. He says, while well, going through the logs, this error in particular kept on repeating throughout. Yeah, but that's just the agent logs. That's just right. I don't. I don't actually see an error here. <laughs> That will restart. This is just <laughs> this is just trying to get monet status, right? Yeah, yeah. I think this is just the heart beating. Yeah. So maybe I'll ask if, if there's anything else in there. I mean, if it's just this, if it's just heart beating over and over, and there's nowhere the details, and it hasn't even received the the task from the CLI, and so the communication is just failing. Yeah. Okay, I can follow up. With some of that info, but anybody else feel free to chime in. Seems like corporate blocking of communication might be the underlying issue, but uh, I think this one doesn't have any new detail. I think I asked last week if they were good and they're I thought they said they were going to get more info, but this is not really more info. All right, I'll follow up on this saga when I get a minute. And the rest of this is old. Anything else? Am I forgetting a step here, Ruben? No, this is it. All right. Uh, any, any other, any other business? All right. I think we have one topic in the Bosch dis discussions. We opened a thread to discuss about um, global deployment flex. Oh yeah. Global deployment flags. Maybe yeah, chat right. Sorry. Yeah, I created one. If, yeah, this person. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need to fix the robots, Ruben. You need to find I discussions mean, too. <laughs> I I don't know. Can you add those actually to a GitHub project? That's the bigger question. Unclear. So here, here we wanted to introduce global flags because there are many, many times uh, there are cases where we want to uh, use such flags like fix or recreate of fix releases, but uh, it's not possible at a level we operate. So because there are multiple different components calling the Bosch deploy command, and there's no central place we can enforce such a flag. Uh, coming down from the Bosch director properties, so we wanted to. We were wondering if there's al already something uh, for, uh, for such a scenario, or if we could do something. We don't. Do we have? We don't have the negation of these flags, though, do we? So if you had a global director flag for like, I want fix or recreate or whatever, there's no way then to do a deploy where you don't get that. Here, 
sorry i'm traveling so you might hear uh, random noises uh, but uh, yeah we wanted to just so we we wanted to we want to control such a property from the outside where we uh, whenever there's a boss supply call we want to apply also flags which are configured by the director but then uh, when our business is done we can just trigger this property back to normal or something like this I see. So not not maybe something we need to deploy the director, but a set of global flags that would you could turn on or off. There's definitely nothing like this as far as I know. The best the most likely thing for something like this would be some Bosch properties in the director that change sort of the way the world works, but I don't think any of them do things like this. So I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one example is that uh, sometimes we have issues with our blob store or uh, something like that, and the blobs are not in sync anymore. And then you must go from deployment to deployment with fixed releases. And uh, mm -hmm. in such a case, it would be very helpful to have such a global flag that you set fixed releases for all deploys and then simply run your update pipeline. And in the best case, this should fix everything. Um, and uh, yeah, that was the idea to to have something like that. Maybe there are also other use cases, but um, that's that's the most prominent for us. Yeah, in the past uh, we discussed reselection. I think as a global flag. Uh, it would uh, have to be a coordination between the director and the CLI, because the like dash dash fixed releases is like really a CLI thing because it the CLI doesn't even try to upload the releases if they're already there. So you'd almost want this to be info that's like on the slash info endpoint. And then the CLI can get that and see like, oh, they want global fix turned on. I'm going to upload the releases no matter what. Which seems like a good idea to fix those type of problems where your blob store dies. Wouldn't that be a thing for like a custom config? Like we, we have also a resurrection config, right? Like, so if you want oh. something like this, like a, a I don't know, yeah. a release fix config, something like that, that the CLI could read from if it exists and that determines the behavior. Configs are very generic and yeah. already in place, which is much better than what I said about the info endpoint, because there's no way to change that currently. <laughs> So that would mean yep. you just need to change the CLI, basically, to implement Yeah, change this, the right? CLI. Yeah, and then the CLI determines the type, right? I think the type of config... Just a string. Just, yeah, it's just a string, right? So the CLI, could this could be a CLI-only feature. Yeah. Uh, but just... But if it's a CLI only feature, uh, and then we still need to uh, like communicate this uh, the availability of this property to other deployments which we have in our scenarios as different components. They need to integrate, modify the code a bit, or does it come centrally from somewhere? It's it's a CLI it's CLI behavior, right, to fix a uh, uh, a release. But it would be it would apply to all deployments because the CLI oh, is like getting the, runtime the data. Config. Yeah, it's something like yeah. a runtime config. But runtime con there's cloud configs, runtime configs. But the configs API in Bosch is uh, meant to be really generic. So I think we also have a resurrection config at this point. Uh, it's poorly documented, can... but great. <laughs> yeah. This is also but... meant that there is a global configuration for this selection. Yeah. So. That way, like you could introduce a new type of config, uh, and then the CLI could yeah. check that config, yeah. fetch it if it exists, and then changes it, change its behavior. Yeah, we have a link. I pasted the link into the um, chat, the document text. Cool. Yeah. So the configs, the configs endpoint just takes random YAML. So the resurrection config currently looks like this, but it the this type of config we're talking about here doesn't have to look like this. Although 
it probably having some sort of way of including and excluding the rules to specific deployments would be useful because it's like, oh, I really need fix, but like it's really bad if you're unfixed on this deployment. So being able to to do things like that would probably be a good enhancement, but not necessarily for MVP maybe. And then that would mean the CLI has to hit this before, see if the config exists, which is exactly what the um, health monitor does currently. So it hits this resurrection config and then it's almost never there and just ignores it. But when it is there, it uses that to determine whether it should or should not be enabled. Okay, so running what particular command uh, first checks whether this config is available. We'll have an example. I'm sure not all commands would end up checking for this config, or whichever ones probably make sense to implement it on. I would think you know, obviously, deploy is an important one. I don't know if there's other ones that would make sense to yeah. check for the config. Yeah, depends okay. on what yeah, you want this fix to apply to. Yeah, yeah. The, the question is like, are you going to make it uh, deployment flags or are you going to make it really specific to this use case, right? So is it maybe release fix or, or yeah, I mean, fix itself is it's different. Like, do, do you want both in there or do you, do you want to just have a really specific uh, config only for fixing releases? And maybe stem cells. No, stem cells is not a thing. Currently a discussion here though. So I think we can throw this uh, info that we found in there and maybe propose it as a direction, get some more feedback on it. Although I think most of the people who provide feedback are already in this room, but. Uh... Yep, that sounds good. Yeah. Um. I can try to uh, summarize what we found here um, since I'm the meeting leader for the day and then uh, get additional people to correct me where I'm wrong. That would be nice. All right. Anybody have anything else? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to, to start in the Tuesday the discussion about having two year cycles for releasing stem cell stacks and so on. So in general, to release in two year cycles. So as far as... That, right? There was an RFC which uh, defined that uh, we have four year cycles and now uh, to make it more transparent that so that in the community is clear that we have two year cycles. Um, yeah. and, we just keep with every uh, keep up with every new LTS release that Canonical basically releases. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's not clear for the stacks whether they want to go that path or not. Um, yeah, for example, so should be a community decision. I think that we have two year cycles releasing the uh, stacks and uh, stem cells so that we. It's coordinated. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Although I, I would not know who would be against it, but you never <laughs> know. <laughs> Before you ask. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the, the jumps will be much lower. The the issues that we had from jumping from Xenial to Jemmy will be much lower. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Or the pain we've experienced with trying to keep Xenial running for an extra few yeah. years. <laughs> <laughs> so if the community wants to support FIPS, uh, you also need to have two year cycles. I like this idea. I have to drop for another meeting now. Um, so somebody else will have to continue yeah. meeting. Just for your information, I wanted to start the discussions. Yeah. In the tools. Okay, then, uh, yeah, we are finished, I think. Oh, is the there... real loss connection? Okay, I'll answer that. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, sorry, you're sorry. <laughs> right. Okay, uh, okay. See you guys later. Bye bye. Right. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.